Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, I'm joined by Pastor John as he is on study leave in Washington, D.C. We also talk about our messages in the series entitled Fearless. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back to Armchair Preaching, uh, everybody. Uh, we are recording this um, over Zoom because Pastor John is away right now in Washington. Yes, I am. Uh, John, what are you? Uh, what are you doing over in Washington D.C.? Well, uh, we today begins a conference, a uh, group called the Fellowship Community. It's a group of Presbyterians, um, churches, uh, uh, leaders that uh, who care who care about um, the gospel and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, which makes us by definition uh, uh, evangelical um, uh, Presbyterians. And I don't mean that in the political sense. I mean that in the in the best theological sense of it. And these are people who are really, really committed to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they found a, a tribe, a, a network of people who are like-minded. And we get together. Um, well, we haven't done it for a couple of years uh, because, of, because of the pandemic, but this is the first time back in a couple of years. So, uh, so I came up here to be a part of it. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's sad. We have to kind of make the, the differentiation between evangelical theologically and evangelical politically because it really it's kind of an oxymoron to say there's a a a kind of a political evangelicalism because it's it should be all theological well it's 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 all the bashing that is uh in in the news that that it makes us want to put a little qualification like that and that is that that somehow that that being evangelical is associated with uh, certain positions on certain things which which I'm, I'm sure largely is true, but that's not how people like you and me and all these pastors and all these churches think about it as a primary act of the church. Primarily, this is a group of people who understand that the, the best news that this world has ever heard comes um, in, in, the, in Jesus Christ. And we want to make sure that that is not a just does not uh, get watered down or missed. It becomes it's the central act for us. And so we want to talk about what how to do that in a world like ours. Yeah, that's why absolutely. we're here. Absolutely. And you're there uh, through basically this week. You're here uh, back in the back in the saddle this Sunday for sure in Vine. Yes. Uh, yes. So I, I'm here through through Thursday. I'm back back home on Thursday, uh, God willing. And the cancellations like I had yesterday do not uh, had, a, had a difficult time getting here yesterday. So, uh, so God willing and the cancellations yeah. don't take place. I will be back home on Thursday in time for my wife's birthday. So. Oh yeah, well, you definitely want to get back for that. <laughs> yeah, although we're pl- the party, knowing that this this may be, you know, we may not. This was a risk. Uh, we planned the party on Friday, so yeah. we're, we got we got a twenty four hour window to to play with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're definitely praying for your uh, safe return. Um, this past Sunday, you and I were in uh, in opposite places of where we have been for a little while. You were preaching in Vine. I was preaching mm-hmm. in Classic. It had been a while, I, I realized, um, since I've been in Felt Classic. the same thing. Did you like, feel? Wow, it feels good. Yeah, it feels mm-hmm. good to be back in, in this setting here because as you, as you would have experienced in Classic, half of the church is here. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, got to, you have to experience half of the church in worship in that setting, and I get to experience half the church in the other setting. Yeah, and definitely post Easter and and uh, in that environment, it's, it's d- different. We had the bell choir in classic, and and so it was it was neat to be able to 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 experience that live and in person. Then, of course, we had the the pre the pre taping of classic on Thursday, but we were in the uh, the 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 next message in our series entitled <laughs> Fearless. We were tackling the fear of insignificance, and I, I loved how you opened up uh, your message with the story of Jimmy. Uh, yeah. Well, now remind people, remind people um, that, that may have forgotten. You know what? What was that? Where that story was out of a out of a book. I, I don't know. It may be a book that you really have to kind of be love insider baseball when it comes to church, the, the quirkiness of church life here, because it's full of these stories of quirky things that happen in the life of the church. But it's, it's a written by a Presbyterian pastor named Michael Linval. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the book is called The Good News from North Haven. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. just the life of a small town 
pastor fans of jan karen and the uh, father ooh, father brown was it father scott i can't remember the, the character father brown name. yeah yeah father, yeah, father brown. brown would appreciate it sort of a cross between that and uh garrison keeler if you know about garrison yeah. keeler in terms of his storytelling so yeah the good news from north haven or, yeah. or um lake wobegon yeah yeah kind of a slice yeah, so of life a, it, sort of thing yeah yeah Amer- americana uh into you into the characters of the story let the let the experiences of the the characters in the story uh, uh carry the weight like jesus does very parabolic you know very very let mm-hmm. the let the story and the narrative carry the weight of the meaning of, yeah. of what he wants to impart and this one was a was a fun one just a of a boy named jimmy who who flipped off the cameras and and, <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they, on live television which i you know we can't even imagine that now but uh uh, but on live television, so you know, three minutes later after a screen blackout, Jimmy's gone. Yeah. And so, the, and I was trying to make the, the point of, you know, some people fear that they're that they're going to be just like Jimmy at some point in their life that yeah. they're at, you know after they're gone or even while they're living is that they just will not matter. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely, um, you know, we tackled this idea of insignificance, and we tackled it from two different standpoints. You know, so talk to me about your you you definitely I felt like uh, went at the idea of the kind of the existential sort of feeling uh, of battling insignificance and really speaking into the inherent value of every person, but especially those who are followers of Jesus Christ. So I wonder if you talk yeah. a little bit about your your approach uh, to, to that. Message. It was that, and I and I was aware that um, that there would be college students and young people in in the in the audience and and higher percentage in this in this service and there would be in the classic service yeah. and and over the years on uh, you and i both know that this is the thing that the, the and we both have lived this we've felt it ourselves that that people on in their you know teens and 20s and 30s they want to know that that their life is going to count and so that that thought was i was aware of that and, I, and then which led to the development of well people in their 30s and their 40s and 50s and 60s want to know the same thing yeah. as they're living out their life. And then so do people in their 70s and 80s and 90s. So really, it's a lifelong thing to, to uh, longing on the inside to, to know that they matter. And I also know, because you and I have done talked to enough people as well, that there are many people who will, will compare themselves to other people who are doing what they see to be amazing things and feel like they, they, are, they come up short. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to make sure that we address that. And I loved, uh, by the way, and I know it's in the text there, but look at, you were talking about consider and, and, and look, mm-hmm. but I love the idea that we both tackled uh, the, 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 the idea of what are we looking at? Yeah, what what's is our focus? Standard, of, standard of comparison? Because I loved how you were, and maybe you could talk about this a little bit as well. And just I'm jumping more towards the end here, but the things that that you were leaning on, and when you were talking about the seek first God's righteousness, was you know how we both talked about social media, uh, maybe mm-hmm. your vacation plans, your your money plans, your kids, yeah. your grandkids, all this. Those are the things that people try to find meaning and significance with. And um, but you were saying there you're looking in the wrong place. Can you yeah, talk my, a little bit about yeah my my my. I, I, you know, my, there, you know, there's two ways that you can approach this topic and and approach these passages. And, you know, when I was looking at the Sermon on the Mount, you know, it, it just it hap- so happens that in the Agape Bible study that I teach, we're in we're teaching the Sermon on the I'm teaching the Sermon on the Mount right now, and you know how Jesus is talking to this crowd and specifically to his disciples, he's asking them to look at the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes and then calling them to a greater righteousness. And, and, and so when he, when he gets into this part about the treasure principle and and all this, you know, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, they valued so highly their positions and their status and, and the temptation and, and really the reality for those first century Christians in Palestine was that, you know, they were taught and they to some extent believed that the scribes and the pharisees were more significant in the eyes of god because of their status and because of what they they had attained and so while they were they were dealing with as you put it so well you know their their subsistence or uh, their subsistence living living in you know kind of week to week day to day the the idea was that their significance was still placed on what they could attain from a status position and wealth standpoint. So he goes from this, the treasure 
idea into the don't worry idea and the tie in with that therefore in the middle was was really key and and i thought you know just how how much in our our western kind of culture do we and and we both put it this way we create uh, a sense of significance based on what we have um what we've attained and so the idea that you know n- n- no our our worth and our value and i think I, I i leaned a little bit more into that existential side in the live services you know the pre-recording is is as you know is maybe only the second time you know we get to go through it and there's a there's a little bit of an evolution that happens between between thursday and sunday yeah the thursday recording and the sunday so there's a little bit more of what what you really preached on or the the direction that you preached on existentially um, but then I was like, you know, how do you wanting to, to 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 talk to people about, you know, the way you live into the significance that you have, the significance that we have is based on who we are in Jesus Christ. And I loved how you put out the for God so loved the world, that that idea that we are inherently significant, but we can we can uh, live in. Uh, insignificant lives it, lives if we're chasing after the wealth the fame the social yeah. media clicks or, or whatever but god you know, can I, take those insignificant I, moments and move I, I realize i realize we both ju- we both just preached a sermon on this and and i felt like that we while we came at it different ways that you know we're how we plowed through it and we're what we were saying along the way um was was in parallel and, oh, and pushing much, on yeah. the same points and say, saying the same things but I wonder, if, as now you and I have had a couple of days to, to step back from from Sunday um, and just I'm just thinking this thought as you were just describing that, you know, that we do we do that as a culture. We will we will attach our significance to not not unlike, as you were saying, that the Pharisees uh, of the day will attach it to these other things other than God. And we will think that that makes us something uh, special. Um, so we do tie it to our accomplishments and we do tie it to our financial you know, success or to our families. I loved how you talked about kids and grandkids yeah. you know, that we can say, you know, but my kid is this and therefore, and by implication, therefore I'm, aren't I great? Yeah. Um, my question, my question that I'm thinking about as you were saying that is like, okay, we both talked about that, but why, Yeah. why do we do that? What, yeah. what is that about us that, that wants that and craves that and misses um, more often than not, or, or misses sometimes even, or maybe misses all the time, that, that, that the ultimate significance is tied to something far greater, yeah. so far, which, is, which is God. That those things, as you said, will, will always um, let us down and they won't last, and yet we still do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's what interesting, you know, as you're asking that question, as I think through the, the context of the Sermon on the Mount, I think it's so interesting earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus does this whole uh, sequence on um, he elevates the private righteousness, right? You know, go into your closet and pray, you know, don't let people see, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing when you give. And, and Which is also a poke, poke in the eye at the Pharisees. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, because in, he says, in, in yeah. contrast to them with the very showiness of those yeah. things. You and I think privately. Yeah. And if, if you look at the, those, those passages that immediately precede this, it's this idea that they they're hypocrites, which in the original language means a stage actor. And so they're, they're the mask, doing, yeah. yeah, they're doing it for, you know, they're performing acts of righteousness for the applause and for the praise and for the affirmation of other people. And what Jesus kind of calls his followers to is to look for the praise and the affirmation of God. That's the reward, right? And and a lot of times, I, I don't know. I mean, I I think we all struggle with this, the concept that God is rewarding us and has a reward for us for doing things for His glory. That that we have a hard time kind of thinking through that. You know, the the whole idea that righteousness is its own reward, sort of thing. Um, right. But I think we I, we just so long for visible signs of affirmation, you know, or audible signs of affirmation. We want to hear the the good job, you know. We want to hear get the pat on the back, and we want to get the the applause and and the and the praise. And we take that into our faith life too. I think 
Um, I know pastors, you know, we, we definitely struggle with that too. I, I don't, you know, I think we struggle with that too, you know, constantly yeah. praying, praying against that mindset, you know, so, I think it's something, you know, there's a sin brokenness that's built into us that, you know, is, is it's a, so is pervasive. It, yeah. That, that's the thing that's striking me as I'm, even as I'm asking this question and hearing you, how you respond is that, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's those are all the reasons that we we, but it's so pervasive. Um, and and as you said, you know, we're not immune to that as pastors. You know, just yeah. it, we we are we are, and I know there's a psychological dimension to this, and and I think that's there's a healthy p- part of of you know wanting to be in community and yeah. and feel the 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 connection with the community mm-hmm. which comes which these things bring. But you know, as part of me is just thinking thinking if we're looking for affirmation of our value if we could if we could somehow find it in that moment to, to rather than looking looking to it in these other things that we both took some time to describe could we not look to the cross yeah and see jesus dying on a cross mm-hmm. um and i realize that's just too i mean maybe it's too simplest simplistic to say it but it really is pretty powerful it's like if you really actually did that yeah. you would say okay what was that moment because that moment was the God of the universe saying that there is a problem here. And because I care and these people matter and these individuals, which would mean me and uh, ma- matter so much, I'm willing to write this problem at great cost to myself. And if I could see that Jesus, you know, hanging on the cross, I could see, I would see value in me. Yeah. A- and it would be enough. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, it is a simple, I think it is simple, but not simplistic. I mean, isn't that what, isn't that what Augustine, you know, when he's, when he's writing his, his autobiography in the confessions, you know, he, at the beginning, he talks about how often he valued, um, the praise from other people and how the, the, the antidote to that was the cross. It it was the, his, his created, the created image of God in him. I mean, it was those sorts of things that he had to keep falling back on as he goes into faith. So I think simple, but not simplistic in, in, in that it takes it. Cause if it was simplistic, it would be so easy to do. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean to take anything away from all of these good things that we're talking about here. I, I want, yeah. I want us to have value. And I mean, the, you pointed it out in, in the message labor, the labor of the work of our hands is of God. Yeah. You know, uh, you were talking about the passage from, from uh, Thessalonians, I think it was, yeah. uh, where, uh, you know, do work. If you don't work, you don't eat, you don't eat, or if you, uh, six days you shall labor, but you know, one day you shall give unto the Lord. Um, it's not, not to take that, va- take, take value away from these things. It's just not to find our, our, our intrinsic value in those things. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that's what we were both go, going for yeah. is that, that those things are all good. Vacations are great. Um, you know, se- the, the security that, that funds can do to allow you to eat and to do things to make an impact on this world. Great kids, of course, great grandkids, mm-hmm. even way better. I know now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, social media, I'm, I mean, that's funny as you were talking about, I was listening to you talk about it. I said for me to, to, to post like my daily prayers or whatever it is, you know, you, if you can get a place where you're like, I want to add value to other people's lives. Yeah. Great. So these are all valuable, valuable things here, but I don't want any of us listening right now or anybody, anybody as a believer to, to find our value there, to find our significance yeah. there. And I think that's what, that's what was sort of the peel back the layers, what we were, we were going for. Yeah. And I think that's, it's, isn't it so, isn't it so uh, insidious of the, the tempter to take things that, that are, are not inherently uh, evil um, and maybe even tap into something good in, I mean, good in us. So you think of like social media, for example, and, and the idea behind social media, at least um, to some extent, was to connect people, right? I mean, that was the, that was mm-hmm. at least, at, at least that was the stated goal, right? Whether, whether there was some, you know, nefarious purposes behind the scene, but the stated goal was to connect people. And who would not, who would say that connecting people to one another is a bad thing? But what happens is we, we, we're constantly perverting that, 
right? We're constantly perverting good things like good work and turning them into idols and turning yeah. them into uh, where we gain our, you know, we, we, we replace our inherent value with these things that are not supposed to speak into our inherent value, but are supposed to um, be valuable, but are not supposed to be the things that we, yeah. we gain our sense of worth. And I, I just think that that's, it's so pervasive, especially now. I, um, and I'm, and so that's, that's you and me, not, not me rallying issue, a rallying cry to dump social media. Although many people uh, are dumping yeah. social media, uh, because there is good, uh, that can come in social media. The connecting piece that you just described is that, uh, you know, that, that, that's, it can that's be, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, it's just, we, we have to, you know, we have to monitor our own uh, hearts when it comes to our attitudes towards and our involvement with social media. Yeah. Well, and it's even, you know, it even goes to the whole wealth conversation as well. When in, in you know, talk about cutting room floor things. The interesting part was the agape class got to hear the cutting room floor things. Cause I was teaching on this, these passages and, and, and like you were just saying, wealth in and of itself is not a bad thing, you know, having a good job. But if you begin to sacrifice those things that do tap into our inherent value as, as followers of Jesus Christ, um, they become idolatrous, you know, because even amongst Jesus followers, there were, there were wealthy among the followers. I mean, that wasn't the the majority, but you've got folks like Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, and you've got mm. the, you've got the women who are mentioned in Luke eight. And by all indications, they were at least somewhat comfortable enough to be able to, to um, be benefactors to Jesus ministry and his disciples ministry. And, and we know that amongst the, the, the ministry of Jesus, they had, they, they, they had a money bag, you know, Judas would steal from it. That's how much, you know, so they had some mm. left over, but it's, what do you do with that? You know, it's what, because if you, if you attach your worth, as you, you mentioned in your message, if you attach your worth to that and you begin to, and I loved how you kind of, you 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 uh expanded on this m m far more than i did the idea of comparison if wealth is your inherent value and you compare yourself to somebody else who has more than you then you feel insignificant by comparison and so you reach for that next level right and i and and i just think it's what do we do with what God has given us. Do we, tr do we cr take those things and make yeah. them idols? You know, do we make our family? I love idol? that. Yeah. Yeah. I, lo I love that. I, I love what you're, you're saying. Cause isn't it, isn't it the human condition to take something that, that is good and can be useful for blessing people and bringing, bringing um, uh, he healing and, and connections to people. And then we, we turn it into some idol or we turn it into some sinful, sinful pattern or we, or we over attached to it and, and it becomes a replacement God. It becomes an idol itself. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you, you know, you mentioned, I think in, in your message, the, um, the Psalm, um, when, when the Psalmist writes Psalm eight, you know, what is man that you're mindful of? And you use that to say, well, look, compared to the almighty God, um, we are insignificant, but not because, but it's God's love for us that gives us significance. But then, yeah. The psalmist, you know, talks about all of the stars and, and all of the, the, the things that God has created. Um, but even those things over the course of human history, the moon, the stars, the sun, all of those things which are supposed to be um, examples of the creative power of God, those have been the actual things that that people have bowed down to, you know, they've bowed down yeah. to stars and prayed to the stars and the moon and the sun and made them gods. And so the very things that God creates as good gifts, we will pervert them and try to turn them into an idol. And when it becomes an idol, uh, it becomes, and we begin to feel like we're losing that thing. That's where the fears start to, to, to invade our souls and, and the comparisons start to take place. And it's so it's so unnecessary. So unnecessary. Were we to were we to were we to have um, this is kind of where you, you you landed. Were we to invest in the things that that do last, as you said at the, at the, at the very end, and when we were to pour ourselves into and find our meaning into the life of faith and the, the centrality of of God, um, we it's so unnecessary to find to 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 fear insignificance when we have it already. And, uh, and so I just, I love how you, um, how you 
how you just wove that right into your, tr- how about this, you know, rather than, rather than pour that extra time and energy and passion into what you're already pouring into your jobs or these other things, how about pour it into the, into kingdom work? Well, and, and, you know, the, the thing that got me about that is, you know, last week when they took the, when they had the little kind of the celebration for the kids pack crew here at, at FPC, I began yes. to think, you know, that crew, um, and they have two different crews that come twice a month and they pack hundreds and hundreds of plates of food. Hundreds. Yeah. Every yes. single, every uh, single ch- month. Children are, are not hungry because these people show up on Sundays. And I just thought, but how, I mean, if you think about that hour from nine o'clock or nine fifteen to ten thirty or nine thirty to ten thirty. That's not a significant amount of time, you know. That's not a and and so often we think of an hour as an insignificant amount of time, but it becomes imbued with eternal significance because we're putting our significant energy towards a significant end. And I just, um, and I'm not sure I unpacked that as well as I wanted to, at least on the recording. But to me, it's just like. God has given us two hands and two feet and a mouth and eyes and, and a heartbeat. And we can put that towards kingdom purposes. And that let's that, make that, it count. Yeah. That pushes back the, the fear of insignificance because I guarantee you not a single one of those two dozen people thought that that hour was insignificant. Right. You know, right. Um, Whether the recipients of it, of these food packs, ever know anything that that it took to get that to happen those people knew they did something that made a difference yeah and 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 that goes with our our financial resources it goes with our energy it goes with the relationships that we have every single one of those moments can be used for eternal significant purposes because as you put it in your message because we have been um implanted with great significance by a loving god then we go out into the world and and take every moment for this the kingdom significance so you know a lot lots you to know, that. Yeah. you know that you uh you end your sermons with a with a reminder of god's call Every Sunday, uh, yeah. every Sunday, every Sunday, you're, you're, you're God, God is calling you to something. Yeah. Um, maybe we can talk about that in the future, but you can give it, give us a little hint. Because, and in this case, it was, it was, there is God, what, what God considers significant. Yeah. He is calling us to participate in what he considers to be significant. Will you mm-hmm. answer that call? And I always, what I, cause so that, that, I mean, I've been, I've been ending every Sunday sermon like that for, 20 however long i've been doing this 25 Mm. years 25 years because to me there's you know discipleship is always a journey we've talked about this before it's always a process right it's always a journey and and i as i look at at the discipleship journey there are there's always the call of god to the next step you know we've talked about that there's always the call of god to the next step of of faith you know but at the same time, there are counter calls, right? There are calls from all other corners of our lives telling us to invest someplace else, right? So to me, there's always a, a calling. And sometimes that calling from, from the scripture is, is a, is, is a, is an effective is, a, is an effective calling. It's something that deals with our emotional uh, quality. You know, so, some sort of an emotional posture. Sometimes that calling is an intellectual posture. We have to change our minds about something, mm-hmm. um, and 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 sometimes it's behavioral. Right? We've got to change our actions. You know, we're doing something sinful or not not productive for the kingdom of God, and and we've got to move in a different direction. And you take those three things together the 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 effective and the the intellectual and the operational or the behavioral and and that 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 creates the core of di- discipleship transformation and so every sunday for me it it's reminding people if you take nothing else away that's the sentence that i want you to take away you know that's the sentence that i want you to that i feel like god wants us to take home with us and it acts as a, a period at the end of the the sentence for mm-hmm. me. 
Uh, so that's, that's, that's important. Um, but it also acts as a focus point for me. So a lot of times I will, I'll start the writing process with what do I believe God is calling us to do in light of the scripture that we're, 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 you know, um, d- 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 considering for that day. Well, that's fantastic because it, it, it crystallizes the message for the hearer as well. And I no, think I that's a, that. it's really a, really a, a strong way to, uh, strong well, way to end that. It's funny that you said that too, because, uh, Tom Ingui, our, our, you know, our organist here, he, he, he pointed it out to me. He said, you know, every time you get to that point, I know that it's, it's about, to, to we're getting ready to head to the bench. <laughs> and I, I, and I, and I remember, um, our former worship leader, uh, HL McConnell, he, he knew he would start, you know, moving towards the stage when he heard that, that the, the, those words, uh, the, the, words calling, calling. the calling words, he knew that that's when it was starting to happen. So, <laughs> or that was the, the, the beginning of the end, so to speak. So, and then one, one more comment, which had really had to do with before you even spoke, um, it was really nice. And I know you've got some travel plans to, to kind of finalize th- this, but it's really nice to hear Rebecca pray you in as uh, she, she prayed now for Dr. McGowan as he, oh, as he brings yeah. the gospel. May we hear it well. I, I was like, oh, that. look at that's the first time I've heard that, heard that in, in, in worship. So I appreciated well, that. That, yeah. that was very, again, a proud moment. Yeah, I, w- I appreciated yeah. that um, as well, too. And I, I the other day when I was, was the first time, uh, so we had a, a, a baptism the other day uh, in Vine uh, with the uh, Rodriguez family mm-hmm. and it, uh, uh, signing their baptismal certificate. I rarely actually sign reverend on anything. I don't know about you. I rarely do that. Uh, but I do on baptismal Same. certificates. I do on wedding, um, wedding light, you know, wedding licenses and things like that official official documents it was the first time i wrote reverend doctor on on one of those so that was, that was i told julia i told my wife julia i said you know um i didn't i it i didn't know how to write doctor on there it was weird so i, had to write I appreciate it and uh, this sunday you are back in vine and i'm yep. back in classic we are talking about the fear of uncertainty which uh I don't know how wow. you feel about it, but as I started thinking about it, I think one of the the root of pretty much all other fears is this: all all the other fears that we've talked about the, thus far, uh, the fear of uncertainty really is at the root of all of those. So, I, that's and with kinda, all the in, with all the instability that's around us, how, the, how, apt, the, yeah. how it's going to end up and how it's going to how, how it's going to land is uh, is is very disruptive and has lots of people on edge. So I think it's going to touch a, a real, um, real, uh, real issue in our, in our culture, in our, in our lives. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to that. If anyone has missed uh, this past week's messages or any of our previous messages, do invite you to go to fpclakeland.org, go to the worship page and the sermon archive tab. They're all there. You can see complete services. If you've missed any one of our episodes of armchair preaching, make sure you check us out on Apple podcast, Stitcher, Google play, Spotify, or SoundCloud. You can click the subscribe button. Uh, we'd love that and uh, share it with your friends. Um, if you've got any emails that you'd like to, uh, any questions you'd like to email us, uh, I'm going to add this in there today. Uh, you can email me, Z McGowan at fbclakeland.org. That information is also on our website. Uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, about, uh, you know, what you're thinking about as it relates to the messages as well. Uh, but John, thank you for uh, joining on uh, this week, uh, Distance, and I hope it's a great week at the Fellowship National Gathering. Um, I, Thanks very much. Sorry, I'm it's not getting to, to be there this this year. So it's good to be with you a thousand miles away. So we can do it this way. <laughs> yeah, it's neat. Thank you so much, John, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks.